You want to talk about lighting? Check it out. Check out our sound when we drop it like this. 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 Drop 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 So a lot of our decisions stemmed from speed. We had two days to not only get all the lights in, but get clamps on them, get them wired, get power ran, put them up in the grid, program them, and actually run the show. Our first show in here with the lights was going to be a live event. That's why we had the rush to get the lights in. And we wanted to make sure we didn't have to redo all of the work we were doing for this show for the next couple shows we had coming up, which were all virtual production, camera tracking, videos on the screen, clients coming in, things like that. So we wanted to make sure we were accounting for our production needs and our live event needs all with one build. To do this, we had a couple different lights coming in. We had moving headlights, we had wash lights, we had Lico's, we had some effect lights as well. And so we decided to spread them out throughout the grid in a very specific pattern. The moving headlights, we decided to put four in the back, four in the middle, and four up front. This gave us full coverage over the entire volume from our grid in the ceiling. Then for our wash lights, we decided to do a circle pattern around the grid. This means that when the talent is standing in the center of the volume, we can hit them from all angles. Same thing with our Lico's. We actually placed them very close to our wash lights. This gave us the option to do nice soft light from the wash lights or hard kind of shadowy casting lights from the Lico's. Why would we want to do this? Well, when you're doing an environment, let's say we're outside in a field and we have the sun pointing from one direction, we want to be able to cast a shadow from the sun on the actual ground to mimic the lighting you would actually be in for that environment. We do this by having the wash lights create the overall lighting in the space and then have a single Lico shining a very harsh light. This would be the light coming from the sun in order to cast the correct shadows. We want more light coming from whatever angle the sun would be at and less light coming from everywhere around. Now we did it in a circle pattern because if we wanted to move the environment or the sun, let's say the sun is now shooting from the left side and we make that decision on site, we want to be able to quickly and easily turn up the light coming from a different Lico from a different direction while the wash light stays somewhat consistent, thus giving us now the shadows coming from the other angle as we have now just moved the sun. And finally, we sprinkled around the effect lights. These were wash bars that had a motorized tilt on them and could cast different beams out of the bar itself. So we scattered those in two columns going up the grid. This way we could do different effects and just have coverage over the whole space. We didn't quite know what to do with these particular lights and we know they're gonna be moving throughout the course of our time here. Then to fill the rest of the space, not even on the grid, we had other lights spread throughout the space. This was to add audience lighting is what we call it, mood lighting, ambiance lighting just light that doesn't have to be for the grid that we can fully control throughout the whole space. So once we had all that specked out on a 3D render and we were all happy with the placement of things, it was actually time to figure out how we're gonna control it all. Again, stemming from speed, we didn't have a grand MA full size or a light sitting here. So we made the decision to go with Mad Mapper. This was for a couple reasons. One of them being how fast we could get the whole place set up. The other main reason being that it can actually take in an NDI video feed or any video feed for that matter. This means as we have guest VJs coming into the space and the Unreal Engine scenes, we can be sending out video to our lighting software 
overlaying that video actually onto the lights. So as we move that environment around, let's say move the sun from one location to the other, the lights would also react in the same movement. We didn't have to do any other programming besides just moving the sun. This was for our production needs. And for the actual live event we had in here, we knew that we could get this place up and running in a matter of hours with all of our programming done. Now, Mad Mapper is not the best for movers. It is really great for anything you need to pixel map. And it's very visual, meaning you drop a visual asset on top of your lights and the lights are doing that exact thing. That's what's great about pixel mapping. However, in terms of moving headlights, luckily I've had some experience in the past with the nightclub, so I already was able to build custom assets that controlled the pan and tilt of all these movers, being able to group them in different groups, parse them, do all the sorts of movements and fans and effects that I wanna do already built out. So I had to copy and paste that code from some of my other files for this show and it worked out great. It definitely took a while to get all the lights up because we're dealing with a grid, not just a normal truss structure. So the lights are a little more spread out. This means we were running a little bit longer cables for certain runs. We were drilling into the ceiling for things that weren't on the grid. And luckily we had a couple scissor lifts with two or three people to put everything up. So we got all the lights up and wired in a day. We programmed the next day and the show was the day after that and we were good to go. Along with all the lights, we had a couple other things to set up in the space, like an actual control station for all of our lighting and our guest VJs coming in, as well as something that would be very useful to other clients and people coming into our space. So I went ahead and grabbed a desk from Facebook Marketplace, grabbed some up desk legs, threw it together, mounted some of my monitors on it and got my MIDI controller set up and we were good to go for the show. In order to run Mad Mapper and some other softwares that we might want in the future, we picked up a Mac Studio. This is an M1 Ultra, perfectly fine for anything we need to do processing power for lighting. And we have those other outputs for if we wanna run VJ software or anything else we want on this machine. Mad Mapper could have easily ran the entire show by doing the VJ and the lighting, and it can even cover our lasers and our other outputs to trigger other things in the space. But we used it specifically for lighting on this show and some playback as well. Then we had a guest VJ bring in Resolum. We gave him a single 4K feed that sent to the wall. This feed basically cut the very middle of that 4K feed out and pasted that on the wall. We did all that scaling in the processors themselves, so we had very, very minimal latency. Instead of running it through a computer to re-sample the image, resize the image, and then cast it to the wall. When our guest VJ wasn't going, we had our in-house VJ system running this ran off some of the same computers that we run Unreal Engine on, and this made life really easy, again, using Resolume over there because that is the standard for VJing these days, even though sometimes I like to break the standards and go with something like Mad Mapper. Overall, I was really happy with the setup and how fast we were able to get everything done. Everyone was really impressed. This was the first time they were actually seeing all the lights on the grid up and running and functioning. And even though we have all these lights currently mounted, we're definitely going to be changing them. We're adding a video wall ceiling to this rig, it's not gonna cover the whole grid, but definitely a portion of it and even be able to drop down and get closer for certain reflections and things we need. That's why we're not doing giant soft boxes because we're actually going to be filling the ceiling with some LED panels that can provide that soft light that we need. So with all of that, I hope you found this information helpful. This space here is constantly changing. We're making different decisions, having new clients come in and give us different things to figure out. Plus, we're doing a lot of experimenting on our own with different projects. So nothing here is set in stone, but this is the way we had it set up and probably the way we're gonna keep it set up for maybe a month or two until we decide to change it again. If you guys have specific questions on this volume and lighting, feel free to reach out to me. And if you guys wanna know more about Mad Mapper, feel free to drop some questions in the comments. Let me know that's what you wanna learn about. And I'm happy to make some tutorials all about Mad Mapper and lighting and everything that it can control. I'll go ahead and drop my email in the description below if you guys have specific consultation questions. And with all that, thanks for watching.